Here's a Putnam integral that has a surprising but quite nice connection to the Bessel problem. So if we name our integral as i, and if we study the integrand as being the product of x and 1 by e to the x minus 1, then we immediately notice that the term involving the exponential function does look like a geometric series, but unfortunately it's not convergent over our interval. So this isn't convergent, meaning that we have to do some more work. So one thing I can do to get something more palatable in this case is multiply upstairs and downstairs by e to the negative x. So that does a pretty good job in this case because now you have the integral from 0 to infinity of x times this term up here e to the negative x times 1 by now these two exponential terms cancel out and you're left with 1 minus e to the negative x. Now, this time around, the uh, the term involving the exponential function is in fact a convergent geometric series. So we can use a series expansion here. Now, 1 by 1 minus z, the series expansion of this is the infinite sum over non-negative integers k of z to the k. So all you have to do is replace z by e to the negative x. And obviously the x, the negative x and the k will multiply. So let's write this as the infinite sum over non, the non-negative integers, k of e to the negative kx. So replacing this term by its series expansion, we have i equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of x times e to the negative x times the sum over k of e to the negative kx. Now, because these two terms outside the sum are independent of k, we can slip them into the sigma notation, and we will have the integral from 0 to infinity of the infinite sum over k of x times e. Now, these two exponential terms will multiply, and because the bases are same, the exponents will add up. So you have negative x minus kx. And this simplifies out to obviously negative k plus 1 times x, and the integration here is with respect to x. Now, can we switch up the order of the integration and the summation operators to actually make our lives more easier? Well, if you look at the structure of the function, uh, under the sigma notation, then we have e to some negative exponent times a linear polynomial x. So obviously there are no problems whatsoever with convergence, so you can switch up the sigma and the uh, integration, the sum and the integration operators. So you have the infinite sum over k of the integral from 0 to infinity of x times e to the negative k plus 1 times x, integration with respect to x, of course. Now, what you have can be evaluated quite easily using a substitution, and the aim of this substitution is to somehow get this k plus 1 term outside of the integral. So, yeah, it's a good demonstration of your mathematical pullout skills. So, a good pullout game is quite necessary in mathematics. And life, of course. So you let k plus 1 times x equal to t, which implies that x equals t by k plus 1, which implies that dx equals dt by k plus 1. So now our integral transforms into the infinite sum over k of the integral from 0 to infinity, right? The, the uh, limits of integration aren't going to change at all. And x becomes t by k plus 1. e is now to the negative t. And you have dt by k plus 1. And because the k's are just constants with respect to integration, that means you can pull both of them, both these k plus 1 terms, out. So that's a strong pullout game followed by proof of a double pullout game. So yeah, you can get things right uh, during the second round as well. So what's left now in the uh, integral is t times e to the negative t dt. And what you have is actually quite familiar. This here is the gamma function. 
is the gamma function. Now, gamma x equals the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the x minus 1 times e to the negative t. Now, what you have here is t to the 1, which implies that you have t to the 2 minus 1 here. So what you have is basically gamma 2. Now, the gamma function for integers n is quite simple. It reduces to the factorial of the number 1 less than n. So this implies that your integral here is just uh, gamma 2, which is 1 factorial, which is, of course, 1, which is quite convenient. So that means i equals the sum over k of 1 by k plus 1 squared. And if you replace k plus 1 by n, then that means i equals the sum over positive integers of 1 by n squared. Now, we've proved this result, which is, of course, the uh, uh, the Raymond zeta function evaluated at 2. We've proved in a previous video, link in the description, that this equals pi squared by 6, which is quite an excellent result. And in that video, I proved this result using multivariable calculus, which is which was quite fun. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.